Spirit Savan, one of the more dispersed and diverse constituencies over the years, have had some challenges to overcome. We begin with the community of Jubik. This community has for many years suffered from lack of opportunities. The Honorable Kenneth Daru, parliamentary representative for the area, has many plans for Dubik's development. There's still no general consensus as to under which and village council represents them. So because of that, a lot of the um, local government policies, a lot of local government projects, um, they have benefited from them. And one of the things that I started doing even before the election and I've continued after the after election is from what we call a village improvement committee to coordinate the, the efforts that I'm going to put into my, into my five-year um, five term. Let's take a look at the housing. Improvement of the living conditions of Dubic residents is the first key area of development for the Honorable Kenneth Daru during his term in office. In terms of um, projects, the government recently purchased the Dubic estate and if I, can, if I can pull this this area all the way across the river bank, it forms part of the original Dubic estate which the government recently purchased. And is I'm going to sell to the Dubic residents, I think at the mega price of 25 cents per square foot. And of course, after this, this land is in the process of being allocated to the Dubic residents, as I said, and then of course they will be then free owners of their own land to, to develop. Based on the topography and location of Dubic, Honorable Daru explains what he views as the best housing arrangements for persons in this community. In terms of the housing repair program, it's practically, um, I mean, I see the use testing going about repairing most of these houses because the houses, most of them are not even on their own property. Plus, I mean, most of the houses are really beyond the state of, of repair. So, as I said, um, coupled with the purchase of the of the, of the Dubic estate, I think a housing scheme and, and so on, okay, would be, would, would be, would be the most logical. Um, and I'm, and I'm really going to try to pursue that. Um. The residents of this community are urgently in need of a public convenience. This issue, according to Honorable Daru, will soon be addressed. And one of the um, most urgent needs after meeting with the community um, was um, really expressed to me was the um, construction of a public convenience. And actually, I'm, I'm right there with uh, one of the guys from London Service, just handed me a plan. He have identified a lot already for the, for the um, construction of the um, of this public convenience. With the construction of a public convenience, the sanitation of Dubic community will be greatly enhanced. Because I would assume um, with a housing project, I mean the houses would have their you know, the washrooms there, there and stuff, okay, but especially the tourism part of it, we don't want the tourists to, to come here and have, you know, guys, you know, using the river. And as you can see, the village itself needs a lot of preparation if, 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 if they even go in to unpackage them as a, as a, as a, tourist, um, as a tourist destination. With a newly built community center, the Honorable Parliamentary Representative commits to making use of the facility to aid in the development of as many persons as possible, more particularly the elders. Some plans from part, part of the discussions where the people think that not enough activities are being planned, not enough, you know, where the, the, the problem needs to look out, look out for them a bit more. And Get, get them active, get, get especially the older, the older folks, okay, get them something to do, um, get the youth skills people to come in. We've got lots of um, raw talent in this place. How are we going to harness, it, harness this talent to, to let the people earn you know, sustainable income, you know, to take themselves to the next level? Tourism development. The Dubic community boasts of a rich cultural heritage. In addition to that, the community has great potential when it comes to tourism. Based on what the, the residents have been telling me, a lot of a lot of tourists have been coming there, having a lot of um, taxi drivers and bus operators have been having taking people along, along to the waterfalls. So what we what I really want to do is to formalize it as 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 a as a tourist as a tourist um, destination. And we we up here it would be the entrance to the trail to the as I said the first waterfall is maybe about half an hour relatively simple hike okay but the number two number three waterfalls are really difficult trek okay and certainly not for the faint hearted so they can be packaged in that way and i'm sure okay um if if, if, if we go along that way we, 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 we can see that's a tremendous um, um source of income for the big people because we're talking about tour guiding etc you know people will start having um restaurant to cater to the needs of the of the tourists and entertainment etc who come who come there to visit the waterfalls we now move to the community of Stowe. Fishing is one of the main sources of income for residents in this area. The parliamentary representative has serious plans of establishing a fisheries complex to assist the fisher folks of that area. Now, as you can see in the, in the background, we have a number of um, fishing boats 
and this is probably the area most likely um, even even in development in terms of fishing is to happen okay this is the area most likely will happen well yes and and I, I i i will say fishing complex i will say because i mean um the the constituency couple of grand bay i mean both of a number of, of, of fishing and communities spirit savant for sejan studubic okay so i think here yeah, we are in need of, of a fishing complex because i think for sejan for sejan to probably supply maybe more than 50 or 50 40 to 50 percent of, of, of the catch of, of a fisheries catch okay annually with the plans of developing a coastal tourism village and fisheries facility one resident shares his views I feel good about it because it's something we've been expecting for a long time. You know, we, we're always talking about it and we're always hoping one day that it will take place, it will happen. Also, um, tourism, because if you really notice, um, the tourists from Jungle Bay, that's the only place they come, take their little boats, go out there, do their little diving and stuff because they can't have it done up at um, Jungle Bay. And it brings a lot of um, things there, a lot of like business here. The residents are willing to work with Honorable Daru as it relates to the development of the area. Well, in terms of work, we are already prepared to work with him and we're always prepared to work with him and um, we have plans, we have to bring our plans to him, talk to him because he doesn't know what we're thinking of, so we have to put what he's thinking of and what we're thinking of together to make things work. We now take a look at Fonds Saint-Jean. The Fonds Saint-Jean Fisheries Cooperative is one of the biggest fish suppliers in the entire country. Honorable Daru commended the fishermen on their efforts and pledges his commitment to continue to assist in their development. And I must um, commend the fishers, the fishers, um, fishers and fishermen because they're very, very, very well organized. Um, probably if they were open, you could take a look inside. I mean, they've got their computer, they've got all their whole, all their whole interactive CD-ROM stuff in terms of fishing technique and stuff. So they're very, very, very well organized. And I think um, due to that, the government has, um, over the years, um, invested quite heavily in, in the development of, of the Fossage and Fisheries and Cooperative. And, and, and not just um, from a powerless point of view, I've been fisheries foils under my portfolio and I see this as an opportunity really to really take the fishermen to the next level as I've been promising, promising them during, during the campaign. Another area top on the list of projects to be undertaken by the parliamentary representative, Honorable Daru, is the issue of housing as it relates to the entire constituency. Oh yes, well housing um, is, um, by my assessment, probably number one um, issue in the whole of the, of the whole constituency. And already the government has um, this burst time, I think $100,000 to the Fosseja Bagatelle Village Council. And right now we're in the process of doing our assessment and, and disbursing this money for, for much needed home repairs to the, most, to the most needy. And as I told the people of um, Fosseja at the town hall meeting sometime, sometime last week that um, those who did not get um, any help this time around, okay, please do not be despaired. It's not a one-time disbursement. Okay, my assessment for housing is ongoing and I will see to it that, that, okay, that, that they continue getting a much needed assistance um, in terms of housing. Among other developments earmarked for attention is the Fonds Saint-Jean service station facility for the fishermen of that area. Um, this is again is another initiative um, by the government of Dominica, of course funded um, by, by Petro Carib, um, where, as I said, the government has promised to do everything possible to help the fishermen, not just of Fonds Saint-Jean, okay, but in Dominica by, by extension. And this project, has, it, it's nearing completion. I think all that's missing is to have the electrical connection and then, and of course, to have the fuel with place and um, place in the storage tanks with somewhere at the back and then um, and the fishermen of and the fishermen of Fossesia should be able to 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 start and um, purchasing the fuel necessary okay for 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 the um, fishing um, right here at Fossesia. Um, I've already of course I'm have um, certain um, um, proposals from villagers you know in terms of how this can be coupled with an actual filling station for for motor vehicles so of course that's something we can we can look into in the near future but for now we're just going to be serving the the well the fishermen most most and um, most of all okay of Fossesia. We now move to Bagatelle. Some work needs to be done in the area of sports and infrastructural development. The playing field and basketball court are two sporting facilities awaiting some attention to facilitate sporting activities by the youth in that area. Um, the general consensus is that um, apart from housing, sports, okay, development of, of the sporting um, area um, is high on the agenda. And as you can see to my to my immediate right, okay, we have quite a 
level and playing field and we I mean tremendous potential for, for development. There's very little work I mean needs to be done to, to, to develop this playing field. It's been um, practically abandoned as you can see. Now and then a few of the guys come play play some football and stuff, okay, but they've really appealed to me uh, as a Nepal rep, okay, to, to do all in my power it takes to really develop this and, and make it playable like 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 in the old days. And right we we're also standing on, on a basketball court and um, as you can see, um, the, the backboards and everything else has been um, totally um, um, deteriorated. Okay, so these are the two areas, back-to-back -back, um, sporting areas, football, cricket and basketball. With the upgrade of these facilities, the dream of hosting other events will become a reality. And in the past, some um, certain festivals like Puck Festival, which I think they've had one or two, I'm not quite sure, in the past have been, have been um, hosted right right here on this, on this playing field. Okay, so yes, okay, it will also, it will also form an area for, for such festival um, events, okay, where you need an area where crowds can, can gather, etc. Pitit Savan. Like in other communities in Dominica, supplying the residents of Pitit Savan with an adequate quantity and quality of water is an issue of major importance to be addressed by the Honorable Dr. Daru, Parliamentary Representative for this community. Um, it's been maybe over 30, 30 years, okay, since this current water system um, in, in Pilit Savan, and for the past maybe 10, 15 years, I mean, this, this old system that hasn't been functioning, a lot of the Pilit Savan people have been without water sometimes for day in, day out. Water comes early in the morning, during the day, two days, no water. So um, the government of Dominica, and in conjunction with the WASCO, I um, have heeded to the people, please, um, and have funded this and what this, somebody called the Pilit Savan Water Rehabilitation Project. With the advent of this project, other areas for development have presented themselves and can be termed a blessing for the people of this community. To, in order to access this intake site and um, the project, the project people, they call the contractors, actually quite a lovely stretch of road, I think probably about a quarter mile long. Now on the way down, probably you will on your way up, you probably have noticed like this area where we can already look at the potential for village extension. Sports and infrastructural development. With a new road and access to land, the Honourable Parliamentary Representative explains his plans for sporting and other infrastructural developments in the Pitt Savan area. The Pitt Savan community has been without a playing field I'm forever. I mean, down closer down to the to the Bay area. There was a little area the guys, you know, used to play the Sunday cricket on, but in terms of a proper playing facility, um, we, we, we've been denied that for as long as I can remember. As I said, the, the, the construction of this road makes it open, op has opened the way to making this even um, more of a reality, is the access to the area. And of course, coupled up with that, this is also proposed site for, for the construction of a community and resource centre, which a Pit Seven community had not had also. Um, in Pishne, the key areas of focus are housing, upgrade of infrastructure and accessibility issues which have been affecting the people of that community for a very long time. And I'm sure on your way walking here you could you could see that this area is not accessible um, um, by motor um, by motor vehicle. And I think the Pishne people will be, I mean, forever grateful if we can at least get this thing done, I mean, in the shortest time possible. I mean, does the fact that the health center is located there, I mean, in, 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 we're talking about the year 2010, okay, I mean, a vehicle cannot access a, a local health center, especially in case of emergencies, I mean, I mean that, is, that is just a no-no. The necessary steps have been taken to ensure this accessibility issue is resolved for the residents who frequently use this area. Um, I know negotiations and talks that started a couple of years ago in terms of purchase of some land for um, to, to facilitate the, the construction of the road to, to access this area. Um, for some reason or another, um, negotiations broke down, but I've already been in touch with the proprietors of, of, the, of the said land and I think um, things are looking up, things are looking up and, and pretty soon we should get all the legal matters out of the way in terms of purchase of land and, and get, this, get this road constructed because as you can see it's not, it's not much distance. I, th I think probably the, um, they had this thing that's probably like a small bridge um, over this small um, little um, ravine area and we should be um, all set to go. Bellevue Chopin. In Bellevue or Bellevue Chopin as it's commonly referred to, housing is by far the most important task to be undertaken by the parliamentary representative, Honorable Kenneth Daru. This area where we stand in actually it was um, developed for the um, residents of a part of Bellevue Chopin, I think called Glenville. And these um, homes were, these families were being threatened by, um, by landslides. 
Actually, there was this great slide storm a couple of years ago, and it's, sti it's, sti it's still being threatened by landslides. So, so a couple of years ago, the government decided to to um to take action, okay, to intervene and promise the, the people of this area that they were going to relocate them to to this area and this pretty um. This pretty cottage you see to my immediate right, okay, is, is, is the product of, of, of this of this promise um, of, um, by the government to the people of Glenville. In addition, the construction of a new road bypass will allow safer travel and open lands for more housing and agricultural development. Um, and I'm sure you guys can appreciate okay the importance of this road. The the regularly used road, which is the road we um, which we just passed on. Um, it by itself is also a very um, land, landslide and threatened area. I mean, heavy showers and okay, I'm always um, threatened um, by landslides. So this Pichle and Bellevue bypass can be used as an alternate route in such cases. I, and um, I, we saw some of the guys working on the road currently, and I'm sure you could appreciate it was done in phases. You could see the older part, the newer part. And I think just this last um, fiscal year, I think the prime, the government of Dominica donated um, $100,000, okay, in in the um, extension of this um, of this road. Honorable Kenneth Dan outlined some of the other important areas for development. Discussions with the community and the young people, as you said, I think that was one of the um, priorities in developing this and um, this playing field as you can see it's a bit waterlogged and, and quite a quite a bit of work needs to be done needs to be done and right just right next to it is also a basketball court that is in badly need of resurfacing and I think the, the general opinion of the young people is that this thing needs to be developed okay not to keep them off the street to keep them occupied. I uh, promise the people that I, I am going to meet with them regularly let them know what programs are available for the government system okay to develop themselves okay to, to earn income and not just to not just to sit back and, and, and depend on somebody else for everything. Um, in terms of education, I've also I'm promised the young people that, that I, I will let them know what, what opportunities are available and will try my best to see as many people from my constituency go out, take advantage of the scholarships, the many scholarships that have been available I mean, in, oh, in recent years because one of the things that surprised me is that in the South in general, very few of our students go out to study and I ask myself whether it's because of lack of ambition or it's because, but what most of them have been voicing to me is that, hey, scholarships come and they have no idea that these scholarships are available. The parliamentary representative has also expressed his confidence in accomplishing the goals set for the community and people of this constituency. I, I am confident, okay, because um, because I, I, don't, I, do, I, don't tend, I, I don't intend to take the, 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 the um, the traditional approach to this, as I told the people, I plan on having frequent consultations with them. Together, we've already started to put various um, committees into place, various sports committees, at various um, village improvement committees, and try to see how we can develop like a, a village development plan for each of the villages of my constituency. And I think if we take that route and we have frequent um, consultations with one another, inter exchange of, of ideas, okay, I'm, I, I don't see why not. And of course, with the support, and I know I will get the support of central government and Okay, who may represent them. Um, I'm sure okay, we can take Peter Tsevan to the next level. And so it's been a very productive day in the Peter Tsevan constituency with Honorable Daru, parliamentary representative for the area. We're ending our broadcast here in Bellevue, the very beautiful community of Bellevue Chopin, as we sought to bring to you developmental focus from this constituency. And so thank you very much for viewing GIS.